If you think about it, there are so many cool features on gaming peripherals that are specific to a particular brand. But what if we were a step closer to you know, having some of these cool features more standardized across the entire industry. And I'm not talking about honeycomb shells or USB pocket receivers for wireless peripherals, I'm thinking bigger. I have divided this into three categories for gaming audio, keyboards and mice with a genuinely interesting list of features that I hope to see more of or to become more common in 2021. The new Pure Loop All-in-One coolers from Be Quiet have a doubly decoupled pump near the radiator for silent operation and flexibility for mounting, an elegant cooling block with pure white illumination, an accessible fill port on the radiator with liquid for future proofing, and Pure Wings 2 fans on the rad. Check it out below. All right, so let's begin with the first category of mice, of gaming mice, and explore the diversity in customization. Like the ROG Chucker mouse, it's absolutely loaded from a feature standpoint, but the main thing I love are the swappable micro switches, so having the option to go with the crispy click, which are the blue switches, or the slightly softer click with the beige switches. Asus is still one of the only companies to offer this with their mice, but I feel like this should become more widespread, just because some mice have mushy clicks, they're too loud, and this option would definitely add more fun to the customization uh, to something so important like the primary triggers. Then we move on to the shape customization with custom back plates to change the shape of the mouse to fit your grip style better, like on the new Extrify M42. The default back is slightly more flat and low profile, while the extra plate adds more body. I did not realize how amazing this feature is until I swapped out for the second back and the mouse went from no, I can't really use it because it's not really comfortable for me to like, yes, I can 100% see myself gaming with it. Now we have seen interchangeable side plates with larger mice that are mainly MMO focused and more brands are now starting to include grip tape for better handling and remove any slippage, mainly seen on lightweight options. But I really think that back customization options should become more widely available in 2021, just so that you can have a mouse that can fit multiple grip styles and hand sizes moving forward. I also love the trend towards lightweight mice that do not have any of the honeycomb or perforations throughout the body to remove the weight. I will admit that it was a cool visual distinction for the lightweight movement in the beginning, but now, over time that I've used all the perforated mice, things get gunky and things just fall right through the body. And so I appreciate the full solid shells we see from Razer and Logitech that are still incredibly lightweight designs, but without the holes. I also would not mind seeing more hybrid shells like with the ducky feather, where only the sides have the minimal perforations, but the main top is solid. And I guess as we'll see more gaming wise get solidified, we'll stop seeing the comments about tripophobia whenever we release a new mouse review that is perforated. Then let's move into the fun space with cool mouse colors and mouse pad options too. So we're not in the black and white zone all the time, but with some color variety through the whole peripheral set. I love game specific themes. The cyberpunk is done better than the game itself, but truly one of a kind still. CSGO specific colorways are always my thing too. And I kind of wish that the grip tapes were colored in something specific. Of course, color variations of the actual products are appreciated. And I just think we need to see more color experimentation in 2021 because we have an abundant uh, variety of black and white peripherals but when it comes to color that space just needs to kind of build up uh, in terms of stock and options hopefully gaming companies will experiment we shall see. Moving on, I did not realize just how much wired mouse pads have evolved, but aside from having your traditional USB pass-through for like SD card readers or other peripherals, plus standard RGB around, this Baltius pad has Qi charging built in, either for your phone or a compatible wireless mouse. If you're going for an RGB mouse pad anyway, Qi charging is a nice value add, especially because of that clever high placement where it's out of the uh, your mouse movement area, so you don't interfere if you do have anything placed on it. I guess it's kind of a trend with ASUS peripherals because they even have a Qi charger on their headset stand. Plus the base acts a bit of a hub with full speed USB 3 ports on the side, a four pole headset jack at the front, and of course RGB lighting. Illumination of course is quite common among other gaming brands headset stands, but the, the Razer one does not have Qi charging, so just like with the mouse mat, I would say it's a good value add. Moving on to the keyboard space now, and it's not often we see the space bar get the proper macro treatment. Let's ignore the split functionality of this keyboard because it's the multi-switch cluster for the thumb that's really my jam. This is the proper way to utilize different macros for shortcuts without having to move your hand to a different area of the keyboard. I would love this feature to become more standardized as it's the only way I can see myself using macros. There are some companies that offer hot swappable switches for the space bar, so if 
you want the big one, just uh, install the one. If you want multiple switches in the spacebar area, that's also possible. I would love that to become a bit more standardized. Then we get into the modular element of the keyboard where we go beyond the hot swappable switches, but instead attach different accessories with USB-C connection. I know this is one of the more difficult elements that requires proper hardware and software integration, especially with these digital multifunction dials or even separate numpads, but I'm really happy this exists on the market now, and I hope that more competition follows and perhaps some collaboration where you could attach different USB-C accessories to your keyboard that isn't from the same brand as the original keyboard itself. Next up is an analog control pad that's a cool addition to your TKL keyboard, for example, if you only occasionally use those extra buttons. But I really like these app-specific keycap sets that lets you turn your keyboard into this macro workhorse or a game-specific shortcut keypad. These sets are designed for the control pad, but nothing is stopping you from just pimping out your editing keyboard or your gaming switch cluster. I really wish that more gaming keyboards included accented keycaps that would just add a bit more flair to the product. Then we have this keyboard movement towards optical switches that are technically superior to traditional mechanical switches. And I particularly want to highlight the new Strix Scope RX keyboard because I have not felt such smooth motion with beautiful resistance on linear switches yet. Razer, Corsair, SteelSeries, Wooding, and many others already have optical switches in the gaming space. Having another one is excellent, but to be honest, the ROG RX red switches feel incredible. Take a listen. Furthermore, the stabilizers are fantastic. We have this weird privacy button that minimizes all your windows to desktop. Your pinky will appreciate the oversized control key if you crouch often, but also because of this, the bottom layout is not standardized. You can really feel this optical push in 2021, so definitely expect more optical keyboards this year. Now, I do have one small honorable mention with the Rokat Vulcan TKL keyboard that has the best volume wheel I have ever felt on a keyboard. And I know this is not a new feature, but I wish it was done well more often. The knob is easy to manipulate, the scroll steps are super defined, and adjustment is in real time without any delay. All the gaming brands have a thing or two to learn from Rocad when it comes to volume wheels. Well done. Finally, for our last audio category, let's appreciate replaceable ear cups on good headset designs like the 3 8X. Both options are comfortable, easy to swap and clean, and most importantly, flavor the sound in unique ways. Either allows the audio to breathe a bit more and sound more open, or closing it in for some extra bass and proximity. I also appreciate headphone designs that are more widely used. Therefore, OEM ear pads are sold separately without the need to go back to the original seller. The ear cups, in my experience, are the first thing to go when it comes to long-term wear and tear. So having a good quality ear pad replacement uh, design, I'd appreciate that. Then I love it when we have proper driverless noise cancellation built into a headset microphone. I love me a good quality microphone on the gaming headset, but all the software-based noise cancellation from Razer, Corsair, and others just sounds terrible or doesn't cancel out enough of the background noise. I've already covered this AI noise canceling USB-C adapter, which is awesome, but now it's actually built into the Delta S headset and it sounds something like this. So obviously this is going to be a bit of an exaggeration, on the keyboard strokes, like most likely you're not hammering on the keyboard just like that, but you can clearly hear what type of noise uh, this AI is canceling. And this is driverless, this is just plug and play, and I appreciate that it's going to be competing a little bit with like the RTX voice where you have to install it, it's software based, whereas here everything is built into the headset by itself. Also, this is kind of cool for notebooks and smartphones because of the USB C connection on the headset itself. Here's a bit of an extreme situation with construction noises happening in the background. You can hear what uh, the microphone with the camera is picking up, and now you can hear what the headset is picking up. Obviously, there's some vocal compression happening, but it's definitely better than hearing all this construction noise in the background. 
All right, so that's my list of cool features for gaming peripherals I'd love to see more of. Uh, let me know what you think and share your thoughts down below. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.